Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Today with us, we have Miss Betty Hill. Um, January, we are trying to focus on the helping field, and uh, Betty works with individuals in our community in the helping field. If you want to um, explain what your role is and what you do, Betty. Sure. My name is Betty Hill, and I am the Director of Youth Development for Mr. Greater Milwaukee. I am also the founder of Power Girls, which is a community organization that focuses on girls ages 6 through 17. And our goal there is to empower girls at an early age. Um, so what I do with Mr. Ray Milwaukee um, is provide training, resources um, to existing mentor programs. So, um, and it's all free. We just want to make sure that we're building capacity within programs that currently exist and then also make sure they have access to quality resources, evidence-based resources, research-informed resources, and we all provide, we provide that at Mentor in Milwaukee. We're under um, Mentor National, and that's where we're able to now matriculate all of those resources for free because of the fundings that we receive um, from places like OJJBB mm -hmm. and okay. um, Prize of Donations, NBA Cares, Okay. Um, yeah. So Mentor Greater Milwaukee, so you said existing mentoring programs. So yes. how do they get involved with Mentor Greater Milwaukee then? How do they know about you mm -hmm. and get the training and all that? Okay, so Mentor Greater Milwaukee, um, we are, I like to say a hidden gem because we've only been around for what, two years, mm -hmm. going on three years. And to get connected to Mentor Greater Milwaukee, Part of my job is to seek out programs um, that are in the greater Milwaukee area and surrounding areas. We have something that's called the Mentor Connector. It's a national database. So um, we do have, uh, I'd say, connections to programs in the surrounding area. So Racine, Kenosha, Madison, um, all utilize the Mentoring Connector. Um, but to put our face out there, people don't know who we are. We are in places like uh, the Milwaukee Bucks Arena, Pfizer Forum, I should say, um, places like Summerfest or collaborating with community partners like Urban Underground, like Ellen's Place, mm -hmm. um, um, Elmerno College. Just We just get around in the community. We make sure people know that we exist and mm -hmm. let them know the resources that we have so that they can be connected. Um, corporations like Northwestern Mutual, um, Rockwell, we host things like we our symposium, which was our second annual symposium, amplifying mentoring, and then we just like to be a sounding board for mentoring. Mm -hmm. So it's not hard to get connected nowadays because we will get in your face to make sure you know <laughs> where we are. We um, I kind of want to ask a little bit more about Betty's journey. So, you know, what led you there? Maybe, you know, after high school, you grew up in Milwaukee, correct? Yes, born okay. and raised in Milwaukee. Okay. On Silver Spring. All right, so it's mm -hmm. nice to give back and be part of the, the community yes. that you grew up in. Yes. I never thought that I would uh, actually be uh, an organizer, grassroots. I. I I didn't really think that would be my lane. I just was like, I need to be somewhere making money, mm -hmm. you know? And as you get older and um, I had my daughter when I was 20, so my, my focus was more so on how to provide for her. But as she began to get um, older, I started to see like, I'm not the only one who can invest in her life, you know, mm -hmm. like we hear, it takes a village. So when I started to seek out um, programs to support her too, while I was in school and still trying to figure out this adult thing, mm -hmm. um, I didn't see it. So then that's when I created Power Girls. I'm like, you know, I started doing more research while I was in college about um, human sex trafficking and mm -hmm. how it was just a big issue here in Milwaukee. The hub, Milwaukee yeah. is one of the hubs, number one, I think at that time we were. Um, I don't quite know the data right now, but I'm like, I refuse to let my daughter just get trapped in this because it was getting so close to her age group and in schools, you know, girls being manipulated, manipulating their friends. So 
I just started, I don't know, educating myself and my love as a mom and just for youth. Um, Power Girls came along from that um, because I wanted to fill a gap. And so it just kind of took off doing what it needs to do for who it needs to do it for. And it wasn't necessarily for at-risk youth. You know, I don't really like to push that term. It was just for, you know, whomever. Whomever could benefit from um, being engaged. That was my thing. I'm like, you can engage youth early. And especially at six years old, the way our youth right now, I'm like, Mm -hmm. they know more than what we give credit for. So I didn't want to be the one to doubt or sleep on that ability because I already saw my daughter had it. Mm -hmm. So my journey and I guess being a community advocate started that way and then pursuing my degree in community leadership kind of ignited my fire a bit more and then should I I met you um, through uh, our previous organization so I was able to get a little more hands-on with case management and mentoring and just my drive then I'm like I need to be an attorney because I see how the system sometimes fail our a lot of times fail our youth and Liz and I was just talking about how um those resources are not preventative it's reaction based so how can we get in front of certain topics or issues that our youth are facing so I think I just took more responsibility on how can I be the change I want to see, you know, mm-hmm. what investments can I make? Make sure I'm raising a good citizen, which is my daughter, and then those who come in contact with me. And then um, Mr. Greater Milwaukee came around. Yeah. And when I saw that, it's so funny, I saw the position, I'm still working with you, and I just saw the executive director at that time and how ambitious and, pa- and passionate she was, but it was just her. And so I'm like, she need help. So she said, I'm, t- I'm literally like, you need help. And she's like, I know I'm trying to drop up a, 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 a position. I read it. And when I read over it, I said, I could do this. You know, I didn't have all the qualifications that they were looking for, but I just knew I could do it. And so I applied, I got the job, which worked out fine because we were transitioning. Mm-hmm. And um, I've just been going ever since and just, building networks and building even for me as a woman, like just professional relationships, um, you know, just seeing dynamic women in these spaces that I didn't always have access to, um, seeing the things that I don't want to be and then seeing the things that I aspire to be and seeing more areas to fill gaps, you know, Mm -hmm. like the work just continues. So. I guess that would be my journey to where I am now, but shoot, I feel like I'm just getting started, Mm -hmm. you know? I think a lot of people, not not all, but there's quite a few out there that that have that desire, to have that fire, like you said, right? That want to give back. They have no idea how to even begin. And you took it and you're like, okay, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to figure out a way. How would you say that went for you? How would, I guess, like, there had to be some barriers along the way, right? There had to be, you know, some really great, like, wind that you had that kept you going. Would you want to kind of talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, yeah, those, you don't hear that. So me, my my drive, you know, my, it's in, words is in my blood. You just couldn't sit and do nothing. But then, too, um, the rejection piece, you know, I was able to have Charlotte Moore who's over under uh, urban un, under urban ground mm-hmm. and I met with her and one thing she told me was like you're gonna hear no like not everybody is gonna support the vision you know mm-hmm. and this is speaking specifically to power girls my nonprofit when I was just like well just because you have a passion that's not enough right. you know yeah and so she was kind of coaching me on that and you know I just I can say I got lucky in a lot of ways because I, I think because of that talk, I was very strategic in how I, I guess, position Power Girls to be, I don't want to just do something. 
just mm -hmm. because just to do it you know mm -hmm. I, I want to see that there's a need for it yeah. and if and that is purposeful and I'm not I don't have to reach hundreds of girls you know it could just be three of us I've been lucky that it's been double digits at times but mm -hmm. I think if I would say to encourage someone who faces um, obstacles because you will you will hear no's you know, make sure your heart posture is right. Make sure your why is always in front of you. Mm -hmm. And you're not doing it for the world to see, even though you, you hope the world to see because your ambitions are hopefully positive and good. Mm -hmm. You have good foundation. But that heart, heart posture mattered to me. And so that's why when I do anything for Power Girls, if I do anything for Mentor Girl Milwaukee, if I just do anything for me as a person does it align with my my morals my values my vision mm -hmm. you know you got to have that for yourself and you will take those lows or those rejections or those bumps more like lessons so you never lose mm -hmm. you know you just take them as new opportunities to be better or um different ways to navigate find different well, I wasn't even looking for gaps to fill and just, oh, this is a problem. So what can I do? Mm -hmm. And then if it's not my lane, like when I first told you guys about, I saw the issue of human sex trafficking. It's just one me, I can't. But I knew that there were people who were already out there combating that. So then what can I do to do my part? Mm -hmm. You know, so stay in your lane, make sure you keep a good heart in it and, um, don't just have a passion, you need to have a plan mm -hmm. <laughs> to get yeah. there and be strategic and have a good team. Um, and you can't do it by yourself. Cause that's one thing about me. I'm like, because Power Girls is a vision of mine, I don't let everybody in the vision. Mm -hmm. As far as like the team. Yeah. Um, I don't let everybody put their hands in it. You know, I'm very protective of it. And sometimes that can cause burnout for me. <laughs> so then I have to be wise in that space too. Yeah. But also, um, just being wise with with your passions or your responsibilities, you mm -hmm. know. So could you kind of explain maybe some of the things that Power Girls does or you do with Power Girls? Yeah, so it's evolved, you know, it's first it was just I know I said six to seventeen, but really that gap was six to twelve. Mm -hmm. That's how I started. That's still my my heart. I love my ladies, but I'm just like they they're left behind, you know, a lot. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I was getting off track. <laughs> Let me go back. So can you ask me that question? What kind of stuff Power Girls so, does, or what you do with Power Girls? Yes. Yeah, so Power Girls, so six to twelve was the focus. So I just wanted to find ways. So if it's community service, it doesn't necessarily look like what I would do as an adult, but how can a six to 12 year old know you may make impact at six years old? So we make Christmas cards and those Christmas cards are so cute. They spell wrong words wrong, <laughs> but they knew that these words would be something to pull the heartstrings mm -hmm. of someone who was homeless or someone who didn't have um, a family. Mm -hmm. So I partner, then I would partner with those individuals that are connected to that population. So um, we would do things like that. We um, created tutus for cancer patients in the hospital. So it was always community service centered. And then after we would get together and do the fun activities, because I always wanted it to be fun, that would be my bait, like something with arts and crafts. I love arts. So, um, but then it was like that leadership. So mm -hmm. now if you want to, share with everyone here what you did today how you feel like this will be an impact so now you have that um, professional speaking piece even though it's not professional for them but you break it that self-esteem mm -hmm. building them up making sure that they know like you're in a safe space um as we evolved um i still do those type of things but i knew that the population for the teenagers needed something a bit more mm -hmm. And one of my most proud moments as we evolved was actually last year where we did um, our workshop for business 
um, those individuals that have uh, businesses or strive to be entrepreneurs. Um, I'm like, the pandemic brought out creativity, okay? And Absolutely. I didn't want to sleep on what our teams were out here doing. I saw this young lady, she made over a million dollars. I don't know who she is. I don't think she's from here, but flipping phones. And then my God, my sister got kids, will buy shoes and then sell shoes mm -hmm. and make money that way. So they, there was a hunger to make money the right way. Mm -hmm. And so I created a space for entrepreneurs to not only have an opportunity to have a workshop to learn how to balance your books or how to save your credit report, you know, looking at things that goes into entrepreneurship, but then after that, create an opportunity for them to sell their merchandise. So we did a pop-up shop too. And I was able to collaborate with Secure Futures on that financial literacy piece. And then with Steph Crosley over priority. Mm -hmm. So we were able to, she gave that, that speech about the do's and don'ts. Like, I've built a business from the ground up. What are some of the lessons that I learned um, in this process? And then Alberto College was our presenting sponsor. They kind of hosted it and it was just great. It was a great opportunity. Their Thea Bowman Institute is um, another opportunity for girls of color to go to school with a free ride. And you don't necessarily have to have the best grades, mm -hmm. but let's just get you in the door. So everything that I try to do, like I said, go back to that what is your vision? Is it meaningful? Do you feel proud of it being attached to you? Um, those are the things I just, our events are always some way to empower um, young girls to keep going. I'm supportive of you. Mm -hmm. A lot of our girls, some of them work prepared with like a business plan or a logo. I helped them do that. We gave money, you know, to help them keep going, so. Yeah, I was at that pop-up shop. And that was really, really cool to see these young ladies and each one of them explain their business. And I thought that, you know, just being able to be that young and talk about your business and is a big deal because yeah. you know, some organizations don't know how to socially interact mm -hmm. as well as they used to. So I thought that was really neat to see and it's like their passion for it. And your elevator speech, mm -hmm. you know, having that, that was one of the things like keep, be prepared to talk about what it is be proud of it. Mm -hmm. I have one um, young lady if I could share. Mm -hmm. So she was gonna back out. Well she did back out. And I was like, why would you back out? She's like, well, you know, I had a few I didn't have enough products, you know, I had some things made but I didn't have enough. I'm like never missed out an opportunity because you can always just talk about your product. Mm -hmm. You know, you needed a back order, you know, always be ready. So and then she didn't have a ride. So I went to pick her up, you know, and mm -hmm. got her there. She made her some money. And she got a, now Steph Crosley is one of her mentors, Aww. you know? So it's just yeah. like, that's what I feel good about. Yeah. Just if you, even if it's just one, you know, that's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to ask, how long did it take for you to get your education in community leadership? Forever? No. <laughs> 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 so actually, I started going to school to be a nurse when I was 18. And then that deterred when I was pregnant. And then I was like, you know what, I'm getting this done. But I went to an informational session and I was 20, I wanna say four, 26, something like that. But once I put my mind to it, I had to get that background because I only, I finished my four year degree in like three years. So, cause I was on my grind, I was trying to, cause I got serious at that point. But I say for me to actually get to that point, 10 years to actually buckle down. But that's because I took one class here, one class there, one, and then I was like, stop it, get it together. Mm -hmm. And then I finished it in three years, so. That's great. And you went to Alberno. I went to Alberno. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what's, what's been surprising to you most since opening up your own organization? The support. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I said that people are going to say no, but one thing about me, I just feel like God gave me that purpose. So, I just feel like when you 
are in alignment to what God has for you. It's it's been like I've I have gotten so much support. Anything that I do for Power Girls, it doesn't go wrong. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fail. It doesn't. It's just right, you know. So that's probably been the most surprising. And then the people who do support me is like me, really? You want to help me? So yeah. I believe it's about what you give to. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you you get you what you give it. out. Mm -hmm. That part. Yeah, and I think that people are we're always willing to support that community. That people are willing to give back to the community. You're not looking for anything in return other than success yeah. for the young people that you that you work with. Yes, that you can think about the vision or pray about it or whatever. But if you don't put the work behind it, it's just gonna be a thought. Mm -hmm. You know. So you're right about that. So I had a question in regards to the support to the mentoring agencies that it's provided. Yes. What does that look like? Yeah, like? so one thing I guess I started off mentioning the Mentor Connector. So our program partners, that's what we call the mentor programs who are connected to us. Once they register into our Mentor Connector, there are endless possibilities. Mm -hmm. So um, one, that tool is free to them. It's a database. I like to liken it to your LinkedIn profile. Okay. So it's all things you, your mentor program. So um, from your opening, your hours, your demographic you serve, um, just an overview, sure. high level, low level. Um, that's a recruitment tool. So it connects you to family. It connects you to mentees. That's it good. connects you to um, potential mentors. It's also another opportunity. So if you don't have the technology, you have this free technology to respond, automatic responses. You have me on the back end. You have our national on the back end to make sure no one get lost in the loopholes. Okay. Because it is hard to come across mentors that are can, that are going to be committed. So we want to make sure that we keep them in the flow. Um, that's one That's one benefit or how that looks like, how we support them. Um, we also have something that's called the National Mentoring Resource Center, which is funded by the OJJDP. Our last grant was like $2 million. That was pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, we spread it. It's 27 affiliates, so that's spread thin, like it's yeah. over the nation. But that's why we're able to provide free resources so if anyone uses the nmrc is what we call call it um the benefits of that is say for instance if power girls is just um a group mentoring but i want to look at peer-to-peer -peer mentoring or sure. social emotional learning or trauma this tool provides um, not only evidence-based material or curriculum it is research mm -hmm. informed so i can do my do research like to find out why should I add this or um, why is this important? And then to take it a notch further, myself or our executive di director, Linnell Ramey, can facilitate a training for your staff. Maybe you don't have the capacity to you know, provide training or the um, materials you need. I mean, everyone should have their own policies and procedures, but we do believe there is a baseline that every mentor program should go mm -hmm. through. The mm -hmm. recruitment process, the screening process, the closure process, everything. Those are steps that we believe that every mentor program should go through. We call it our cornerstone. Um, and that's a free training. We call it the elements of effective practice. Um, just any, if you need background checks, all those okay. resources, we give that to you. Um, need to develop your board of directors, all those resources, we wow. give that to you. Um, if you just need someone to know that you exist, we utilize mm -hmm. our platform to help boast about what it is you do. Um, we also opened opportunities to have your leadership team to be a part of our advisory council to make sure that we are all being a collective to make sure the mentoring community is doing what it said we're mm -hmm. going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, those are some of the uh, ways we connect with our program. Absolutely. Majorly more so training. That's a, okay. a lot of our programs are looking for um, more training opportunities. Absolutely. Is there resources to 
connect to uh, possible different funding is there resources for that as well included yeah so we do support that's been a, a, a reoccurring question more so lately like hey i need to find out if it's, there's grants or how can i mm -hmm. so we have been allotted like a national i should say a certain dollar amount and so the talks have been how can we now start helping provide funding to those mm -hmm. smaller mentor programs mm -hmm. um so because we know they make impact it's just not as big as a big brother big sister right you know right um so it's not something that we do right now where we provide provide funding but we do connect make connections to oh this grant is available oh, or great. we can put a word in and to go through our trainings that is beneficial to for funders to see like oh, you're doing the work, you went through this training, or Mentor Greater Milwaukee, or Mentor as a whole is a place we respect. Mm -hmm. um, so we will give funding just simply off of that. Yeah. But it is a goal, I'm looking forward to it, so we'll be like, oh, you need $500 or $1,000, you know, hopefully it can get to $20,000 right. <laughs> to yeah. fund this project. <laughs> but it sounds like it serves as a great foundation to have the know-how mm -hmm. once you do get funding, yeah. right? You have the know-how of some of the procedures, yeah. um, you know, and the, and the know-how to uh, to run it effectively yeah. um, and with support. So that that can that may be even better than money. So that's 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 great. Okay. Thanks mm -hmm. for that information. Even the network that it provides, Absolutely. like mm -hmm. just organizations. Sometimes when we have, we just had an event that I just left from, and it's like now people, oh, I need to connect with you. Mm -hmm. I need to connect with you, and we know we have so many silos here, but when we start talking like oh you do that too let's come together or maybe that pot of money can come here and that's mm -hmm. that's really what mentor greater milwaukee is just really really for the last few years been focusing on breaking down these silos breaking down walls so mm -hmm. we can communicate and really mm -hmm. realize like we have a common goal right you know so yeah yeah beautiful and it mm -hmm. sounds like you were able to kind of take this position and make it yours in a sense and these walls the program because I mean you this is your passion you started you know your power girls and now we're able to take what you've learned and what you've done and put it into this even larger scale yeah I see that I see even just working previously with you like how everything just mm -hmm. the steps led up to this space I think about like okay I was a practitioner like I was in the field doing it here and I do miss that oh my god but <laughs> You also get to now be behind the scene or the resource of what I was looking for when I was here. Like, dang, mm -hmm. I needed these resources, but now I am the resource. Mm -hmm. Not to speak like but big or bold about myself, but I'm saying like this is the resource. Like mm -hmm. I want to here. I needed this if I knew that this existed when I was first struggling trying to put everything together. Mm -hmm. How much more easier it would have mm -hmm. been. So that just like I'd be so excited to share when I do share. Mm -hmm. yeah, you created something that was needed. Yeah, and that's 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 great. I I imagine that's a great feeling for you. Yeah, I guess you don't really get to sit back and think about it. Like I said before, it's hard to talk about yourself, but once you start doing, it, I mean, I guess you do. But I to back career pathway path. Yeah. <laughs> yes, career pathway. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. You get to think about like all the strides we've made and where we started and where we're at. And yeah. it's, we have over a hundred program partners now. Oh Before when we started, I think it was like twenty. Mm -hmm. you know? And the work to, you know, put into that, yeah. and then the corporate partners now that we have, because you know, you think about, you do have mentees that are coming into this space, but you have mentors that can possibly come from like Northwestern Mutual that can then mentor a young adult and then they have a guaranteed job because mm -hmm. you mentored them. Right. You know, like that full circle that kind of comes back around like simply because I was connected to Mentor Greater Milwaukee. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Well, before we wrap up, do you feel like you have any final words for anybody that might be looking to take this, you know, you, you've gone a couple of different ways in your career, but mainly I think your focus has been on, let's speak for you, has been really giving back and finding ways to um, add resources to the community. So anybody who's really looking to do that, any final thoughts or words for those individuals? Um, I 
you're really looking to give back to your community, I'd say look for the gaps. You know, look for where there is a need. Mm -hmm. Don't reinvent the wheel, but if it is something that something that already exists, go volunteer, you know. Um, and then while you're volunteering, you might find that, that gap because you just have an, an, oh, I see this is not being met or you learned something new. So um, don't be afraid to gain knowledge. Don't be afraid to um, find out where the needs are or go volunteer somewhere that, I don't know, drives you. your purpose on this earth absolutely mm -hmm. all right well thank you betty hill for coming in today and speaking with us and uh, for us to be able to share this wonderful interview with the young people that are looking to follow career paths such as yours yes young people stay motivated stay positive yes you can do it yep thanks thank <laughs> you